We're talking hockey. Raul D and Rupp are talking hockey. Bees are rolling, talking hockey. Wedgewood is a brick wall. Hello and welcome to That's Hockey Talk. I am your host, It's a beautiful night for talking hockey on the internet. Uh, that magical sound you just heard, that sweet serenade, was from our pal, the pals, our north of the border friend at Bubba oh, Gumpino. Yeah, oh, yeah, Gumps, oh, yeah. how you doing? All is well. Stars are back. Fucking smack the Kings last night after a little bit of a rough stretch after a hot start, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know all about those rough stretches. Uh, and joining us, as always, our resident Stanley Cup champion, our Game 7 goal-scoring hero for the New Jersey Devils, Mike Rupp. Rupper, glad to have you back, brother. How are you? I'm good, boys. Great to be back. Hey, Gumps, uh, just hearing you speak on on wedgie in such a positive manner i mean we've come a long way in the last little bit bud like it wasn't always poppies and rainbows when you're talking about our boy wedgie and yeah. it's good now like you're feeling happy or what uh saturday afternoon when he decided to just skate around and uh lose the puck against the rangers uh you didn't, love, you, you didn't love that one he went out there, for a there, hot dog huh? there, <laughs> so he, he got caught twice going for a dog it was ugly dude yeah. uh but it's hard coming into a game like that, especially when Otter gets hurt. Yeah, uh, man. We just got to weather the storm till he can come back, man. We got uh, we got the second coming of Matt Murray, who uh, I think he played in Fargo, maybe. Uh, I'm not oh, sure. Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who he is, but he is the backup right now. Let's yeah, see. I'm ha- he how do. weird is that? Another goalie, Matt Murray, getting signed. I mean, kind of got some big shoes to fill. He's got to get. I mean, he's got to get two cups as a rookie to, in order to to fill those shoes that, that the other Matt Murray had. But, hey, stars are looking good, bud. So uh, all yeah. smiles, all smiles north of the border. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of surprises lately. Uh, I think everything was going the way most people thought it would the first couple games of the season, the first five. Then the next five to six have been uh, pretty shocking to a lot of fan bases. We've seen some seen some losing streaks and we've seen some winning streaks from some teams that I don't think either fan base was expecting it for vice versa. You get it. Uh, the flyers are super hot. The penguins stink right now. Uh, the Sabres are rolling. Uh, the, the, the Minnesota wild are trying to figure it out. Uh, it's, it's been a bit shocking. Boston Bruins look like the best team in the league, especially after what they did last night. We'll get to that uh, a little bit later. Uh, that was a tough pill to swallow, but hey, it is what it is. We're talking hockey in November. Not everything is going to be perfect. Not everything is going to be pretty. Um, Rupper, you called the uh, Rangers game last night. How was that? What was that on radio? Yeah, it was good. Um, I did it uh, on radio with Kenny Albert. So, I mean, you know, talk oh, about Kenny. being in good hands. Man. professional. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Kenny's a, a pro's pro. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, I, I've got a, I've got like six or seven of the games lined up this year. A lot of it is around when Hanky Lundquist is coming in, uh, doing some studio work. And uh, so I'll get a couple radio calls in. It was good. It was a good game. Um you know this that Flyers team's tough, man. Uh, they 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 don't control many measurements of the game, but they won't go away, right? And that's that's their that's, that's their torch. job on their torts, right? Like they're going to play hard and, and they're going to compete. And Carter Hart looked good. I mean, uh, torts this kind of game uh, took them over time, and they got a point out of it. The, the Rangers didn't get frustrated that they weren't scoring. I mean, at least uh, they didn't show it. And they stayed the course, and and Kreider got a big OT winner. So yeah, it was good, good atmosphere at the Garden there. And um, you know, I'm interested to see. I mean, it's two one right now. Leafs, uh, you know, back to back Flyers going up to Toronto. I'll tell you what, boys. If if they can, if the Flyers can win this back to back, they got their uh-huh. backup goalie playing. This. Things aren't great in Toronto. Just like you mentioned, Nick, there's some teams oh, that have really just surprised us. one off the bar for the Flyers right off the hop. Who, who, who shot it? I don't know. I just saw it hit the fucking bar. Oh. Uh, you know, like there's there's some teams that are uh, that have really been nice surprises early on, and then there's some teams that have been very underwhelming. I would I'd say the Leafs, um, the Pens, and Colorado. Those are three teams that I would consider to be elite teams that look shaky right now but i'm not willing to throw the towel in on them yet man it's still early just like i'm not ready to crown 
uh, these teams with these early starts. But hey, boys, have you seen? Did you did you check here? What, what are we thinking about the uh, the jerseys here in the Pens Buffalo matchup? What do you guys? I, I like the Penguins one. It's it's the throwback, of course, the reverse retro throwback to the old uh, yeah. Robo Penguin, as they call it, the old uh, hockey <laughs> pigeon. Uh, <laughs> sweet. Um, I, I'm a big fan of the logo. I I don't know how I feel about the color on the patterns and the shoulders and everything, but I dig it. I don't hate it. I I'm not I'm not too crazy about the Buffalo one where they wear all whites. It looks it looks a little rough on the ice, doesn't it? It yeah yeah. The, you know how sometimes like I love the white. It just looks, you're right. It looks a little weird on the ice. And I feel like it looks a little strange with the blue helmets. Yeah. Maybe. The blue helmet. Well, they wear in white pants too. It's just, yeah. It's too I, I like, almost. I like all white, but I like it like in a photo shoot <laughs> yeah. on the ice, on yeah. the ice with the white background. It's a little tough, but uh, it looks like there's about 40 seconds left in the first period. Pittsburgh won nothing. Our boy Zuckerberg got the first goal for the Pens. So, not only, uh, not only did he get the goal rubber, he gave the old Yag salute. He did a little throw a uh, little, little nod to the past wearing those jerseys, right? Yeggs did no. that so much there. So if any those, of these, uh, if any of these guys had the balls, they'd be wearing Yofas right now. Yofa helmets. Yeah. Oh, my nod to the office. boys. I have one. I have one lurking around here somewhere. It's not an official one. It's a, it's a replica. It's a remake because they stopped making the original. Like Gretzky that's, that's all right. If it's a re- hey, the replica is the one that our boy Borky wore. That thing says yeah. not for, not for, uh, not for professional use on the inside yeah it's of it. uh it's some company they just started remaking them like they they are obviously oh, they all the like the back? original jofas are like yeah like all the original ones are like they're not making any more right they're just out there you got to kind of come across someone or on ebay or find it at a garage sale or something this company is uh basically replicating them i forget what the company is called i'd shout them out but if you google it you'll find it they're for like roller hockey and street hockey and stuff they're they're or sweet. The they're the perfect yard. helmet for that type of stuff. Yeah, the shipyard. Yeah. There uh, was the construction uh, yard. Um, there was a uh, when a Swedish a Swedish group came to the shipyard. They all wore jofas as uh, hard hats. It was fucking awesome. <laughs> I wanted one. So, I, I would was love like, that. Fuck, can I get one? I had one please? for a while. They looked fucking wicked. Dude. I borrowed it off a buddy, and that was what I wore in that tournament over in Italy, and like all the international stuff. Like it was just, it was the perfect helmet. It was light. It wasn't, you know, it was all you needed for like street hockey, ball hockey, and that kind of stuff. It was, it was the best. And, and I mean, it looks sweet. You just you throw that thing on, you feel like Gretz back in the day. Oh. Um, man. All right, enough about the Swedes. Let's talk about the Swiss because our guest yes. is here and he's ready to join us. Uh, we we spoke to uh, Nino Niederreiter just not too long ago. Uh, and now, obviously, uh, our guest tonight is another uh, Swiss superstar uh, coming all the way from Switzerland. He was the number one pick in the 2017 NHL draft, and he's come along quite le- nicely. Now he is the captain of the New Jersey Devils. Uh, absolute young stud, Nico Hishier, ladies and gentlemen. Nico, we appreciate you for joining us, brother. Thank you so hey guys. much. What's up? Hey, no, Thank thanks you. for joining us, Neeks. Uh, you're out in, what, Edmonton? You guys playing there yeah, tomorrow, right? We're in Edmonton right now. So uh, uh, you, are you getting the um, Epsom salt bath tonight, getting the legs ready? I don't know if you know this, but you – your leg's gonna have to be rested. You're gonna be chasing around some uh, from some pretty fast skaters tomorrow night. Uh, how's this matchup? You guys are hot. They're hot. Are you looking? Uh, how are we looking uh, going to Edmonton tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, uh, we definitely gonna be ready. I think uh, we came in the road trip. We you know it's uh, it's not gonna be easy games, and uh, we started started it off right in uh, Vancouver. But uh, looking at our season, I don't think that was our best game. So we definitely know we gotta be better against. Uh, Edmonton tomorrow, and then obviously Calgary as well. Yeah, you, uh, you guys, uh, you know, and I, I, I hate to bring it up, but I, you, we could laugh about it almost now. But after the first two games, we're hearing the booze, we're hearing fire, Lindy, and all of a sudden, you guys are like one of the hottest teams in the league. Your third best record in the NHL was it after the first couple games? Was it kind of just all right, boys? Like we're okay. We just gotta fix a couple things. What was the message? Yeah, a hundred percent. I think it was. Uh, I mean, we got some new older guys in there. They, they've been around a little bit longer than uh, most of us. And uh, they just said it's two games. And I think uh, it was just more about about us. And uh, don't listen to what's what's happening out, outside. We knew, like, there's 80 games left. So, uh, and those first two games, it wasn't like we got outplayed or anything. So, it happens. We just got to, what we did, we just stick with it. Uh 
we obviously try to make some adjustments and uh yeah all of a sudden we start winning and it started rolling and uh mood got better and uh we feel more confidence after every game i got one more and then kick them over to these guys uh you know i this team's fun to watch man i i remember last year just uh watching some of the games you guys have no problem scoring goals. It was some of the other things. And it's like you guys are starting to grab a hold of those things and grab a hold of games and control a lot of areas of games. Um, you, you've been here for a number of years now. I mean, this team is talented. They, you guys can rip the puck around. I just did Edmonton radio hit, um, and I was like, hey, boys, like you guys better be ready out there. Like you, This team can snap the puck around too, right? Uh, how talented is this, is this group? Is there anybody we're missing that's under the radar skilled i mean we obviously you you got your, your boy jack uh jesper bratt's been awesome 10 game point streak to start the season uh it, who are some of these guys that we're maybe not talking about that are really skilled on this team um i mean we're just we have uh all what we need we have we got some uh fast tough guys as well they can like get us going with some huge hits i mean just even looking about last year we were missing woody pretty much yeah. like the whole year and uh that's still big for a team if you have a guy like that with his speed with his uh toughness and uh he goes those to those like uh, dirty areas and uh, he can score goals too so we're definitely missing something like that and uh new players we got has uh, been they've been great for us so far and uh i mean just also john marino is unbelievable what, what he's doing uh, on the ice uh not just offensive like defensive as well so he's he's probably a guy i was really impressed with uh nico i wanted to ask you i was looking at the devil's roster and you're obviously from switzerland yourself but there's a lot of guys you guys have a lot of guys from across europe and then uh all throughout canada as well um what's it like uh in that locker room with those guys you got guys from sweden slovakia uh a lot of canadians as well um, you guys all all get along, y'all bl blend together pretty well. And, and being in New Jersey, I mean, obviously that's a it's so close to New York. Do you ever hop over to New York? You guys get to go out a lot, get some of that nightlife and get some of that bonding experience. Yeah, no, um, hundred percent. I would say like we got such good guys in our group. Uh, our locker room is great. Uh, we have uh, we have lots of fun, like good good times all the time. Uh, we come into the rink, we're trying to work hard, try to get better team and uh obviously yeah like uh we're a young group and uh definitely having some fun off the ice as well but yeah yeah i get it can't get into it too much you don't want to get yourself in trouble uh what about <laughs> playing for uh what about playing for uh an old i don't want to say old but like a veteran coach like lindy ruff who's kind of been around forever kind of seen it all uh what's that been like as you mentioned you guys are a young group uh has it have there been times where it's like, okay, old man, we get it. Or is it all like, okay, I, I, is everyone kind of bought in? Like, okay, he's, he's spilling some wisdom here. We kind of need to, to no, exactly. buckle down and, and hear him out. Yeah, no, I, uh, I think we feel, uh, a lot of respect from Lindy. I mean, um, if you just look at his coaching stats, obviously he was a player as well. So, uh, definitely, uh, a, a lot of respect for him and, uh, we can take a lot of things out of him and, uh, He's been really fair to us, and uh, he's teaching us good, good, uh, good stuff, and uh, also just the whole coaching staff working together. There are other guys as well there too, so it's just uh, it's been great so far this year, and uh, we're trusting our system uh, more this year, and everybody's buying it, buying in, and uh, that's how we win games, and uh, we got to understand that. Uh, so you've been in the league a couple of years now, so you've got to travel all around and kind of experience the States and Canada. Uh, you got a favorite spot, favorite city that you've been to just to kind of experience like you're in Edmonton. Now, a lot of people say some things about Edmonton. Maybe White it's not Ave. the best place to Stay visit away. or whatever. Stay but, away uh, from White Ave, lad. <laughs> but I imagine <laughs> there's gotta be some places you've been to, uh, that you really enjoyed. Yeah. I mean, uh, there are obviously a lot of like great cities around the league. Uh, but I always enjoy somewhere going where it's uh, warmer, somewhere uh, on the beach. I uh, I never mind those road trips. It's always oh, yeah. fun just coming out for practice and uh, being able to put shorts on and a t-shirt. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that, that's always a, good. 
Are you a, a gamer at all, or what? What do you do in your downtime? What do you? Is it just working out? Or are, you, are you gaming? No, at all? I actually like, go to. Yeah, yeah, I actually uh, do game, but more do, during a season. Uh, during summer, I, I always leave my uh, PlayStation in Jersey. So during summer, I'm not at all. But uh, during the year, when it's sometimes too cold, or I just want to stay at home, rest a bit, and I I game a bit. Yeah. I respect it. Moderation is the key to everything. Uh, what what games are you into, man? Like, what's your go to? Are you into like? Are you playing Call of Duty? Or are you more like yeah, Fortnite guy? Yeah, I know. A couple of the boys they're playing uh, Call of Duty. Yeah. What, you, so you got you guys do that on the road? You got your clans and your, you you play against each other or what? Uh, on the road, actually on the road. I actually just finished. Uh, we finished the FIFA tournament here in Edmond. Oh, uh, we go. Got somebody brought his PlayStation and we had a two versus two uh, FIFA tournament going here. So Who's your squad? My squad? Yeah. I was with Holtzy. Oh, there you go, Gumpy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go. I, I, what, what about, uh, you know, as far as you know, I'm watching right now, we got TNT, the game on, and I see uh, Henrik Lundqvist, right? And I remember playing with Hanky and just the things he was into off the ice was really important to him, right? It's his way to clear his mind. He was playing the guitar, he'd be with John McEnroe going down to uh, playing some nights in the city and we just kind of have those things unplugged. You mentioned gaming. Like if Nico Easter just needs to get away from the game a little bit, uh, you know, what's what's your way you're unplugging? Is it gaming? Is it something else? Do you have the interest of TV shows? Are you, you know, what, what, what would yeah. be like a way for you to unplug? Uh, yeah, I would say gaming for sure. Uh, definitely big TV show guy as well. Uh, and also just... Trying to, yeah, just trying to uh, do something else in hockey. Like, yeah. Not watch hockey or like watch a movie or just go for a nice dinner. Like we're so close to New York City. There's so many good restaurants around there. Obviously where we live as well, but just going over there for a good dinner and come back and uh, just talk something about with uh, differently than, than hockey with the guys. Uh, that's something uh, I need and I feel like uh, that's important for me. Yeah, Nico, you guys were in Vancouver last night. You guys just looked a step ahead. Did it feel that way on the ice? Like, it feels like you guys had, like, 22 on ones. Like, Demko was hung out to dry all night long. Did it feel like you guys were faster than them last night? Yeah, I mean, like I earlier said, I don't think that was our best game, to be honest. Uh, we we were leading 2 nothing after the first, but I think we got away with that a little bit. And uh, we knew, like, we got to get better. And uh, we did that. Like, second period was better and third was was a little better as well. And uh, But, like I said before, too, uh, we, knew, we know, like, uh, if we play that way uh, in Vancouver against Edmonton, then it's, it's uh, not going to be an easy game for us. So uh, we definitely want to be coming out stronger here in Edmonton than we were in uh, Van. What did you think of their – what did you think of their jerseys last night? I actually thought they were pretty sick. I like uh, them, right? Like those uh, when those all got debuted, we were we were sending around our group thread. I mean, boys, like that was probably one of our one of the top leading candidates, right? Oh, yeah. Or maybe yeah. not for all of us, but like, what uh, what are some of the other ones? Because we're looking tonight. I don't know if you saw Nico. The uh, the Pens got their throwback um, mm -hmm. from like the Yager days, the Mario days, all that good stuff. And then uh, Buffalo's got some the weird kind of white jersey. Is there any other jerseys that you've that popped for you? I mean, you guys had the jersey jersey, and I actually yeah. got I actually got a Nico Eshear jersey for my son last year oh, in, no. uh, in the jersey ones. Those look sick. So what are some of the other favorite yeah. ones you got? Yeah, no, I actually just uh, you saying that, like the jersey jersey, that I actually am in love with that as well. <laughs> uh, I'm always pumped. <laughs> it's it's cool i like they it. look good they look so good on the ice real crisp clean yeah. nice it's different uh nico is um in your off season do you head back to switzerland or you stick around in the states which what do you what do you like to do in the off season no usually i'm always uh I, like i'm always going home uh, to switzerland during the off season and work out and skate there yeah we had uh we had uh we mentioned at the top uh your your countryman nino on two weeks ago and i played with neens in uh in minnesota i loved them uh you know i don't know how well you know each other or can you just speak to how uh, you know, you're you're proud to be a swiss player man and in the list now we're going over yeah. with nino it's like it's pretty impressive some of the players out there yourself you know nino uh you got 
uh, was it Timo? Uh, yeah, there's there's no, like Roman yeah. Yossi. There's a ton. Like, you know, how proud are you to be, you know, representing your country and, and how close are you to those other countrymen? Oh, uh, 100%. I'm proud. I mean, like, just growing up in Switzerland, like watching NHL, like, I like Nino's obviously a little, a little older than me, but for me, I was just remembering watching Nino, like, having his first couple games in the NHL, and I was still a kid. And, uh, thought that was so cool and uh yeah almost like just right there you're like I want that too and like that's how like the dream starts a bit and uh it's just seeing like it was just awesome to see like guys going over there from like such a small country and uh, actually made it and uh that gave a lot of hope uh for like younger players like me and uh I even feel now like there's like more people playing hockey in Switzerland, like even younger people and uh, it's getting more and more popular. So it's, uh, it's definitely, uh, I'm definitely proud to be where I'm at. And uh, it's definitely a, a good thing for Switzerland too, to see like more and more players coming over here and uh, made it, make it. Uh, last one for me, I got to ask you this, Nico, because uh, Rupper tells us stories all the time. Rupper obviously used to play for the Devils, uh, the Rangers. He's been all around the Metro division. Uh, and, and I like asking guys who play in the Metro division this now because it feels like every game in the division is a rivalry game because of the close proximity, the cities, the fan bases, all don't like each other. Do you, got, do you feel that too when you play? Like when you go into Philadelphia and you step on the ice in Wells Fargo or when you go into Madison Square Garden against the Rangers, like do you feel that as well? Is that like – palpable on the ice uh, i know you're a bit younger and and the rangers or the devils were kind of regrouping rebuilding so to speak but it's still like once you get out there i feel like it's got to be it's got to be pretty intense still no uh 100 you feel that for sure um uh, both ways philly but i i'd still go with uh biggest rivalry game must be the rangers game uh it's uh the hudson rivalry so it's it's always cool like i'm always a little extra pumped for those games uh Obviously, lot, lots of fans uh, on both sides always are there. Like, even uh, when we play Prudential Center, there are a lot of Rangers fans. We go to MSG there. You see some jer- uh, uh, a lot of, like, New Jersey jerseys. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> it's always fun. And, like, you, you could just, on the eyes, you feel it. Like, and those rivalry division games, those are important games. So, it's always a, a little extra motivation there for me, for sure. And, and uh, the intensity goes up for sure. Okay, I lied. I'm gonna sneak in one more question real quick. Uh, we appreciate your time, man. But I gotta ask, like, are you uh, are you talkative on the ice? You chirp a lot? Do you, or is it all business when you're out there? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not a big talker, not at all. But uh, who is? I got the squad. I'll definitely get emotional. Like sometimes it happens. Get a little talk going, but um, yeah, usually not. Not not the biggest talkers for sure. Who runs the mouth the most on the devs? Oh, that's a good question. Um, does 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 uh, Woody run his yeah, mouth? Yeah, Woody. Woody got some good chirps, I think. <laughs> yeah. Tough guy, like he's Woody. Yeah, Woody's he is. up there for sure. I would say Woody's up there for sure. Yeah. Well, hey, listen, man. I'll, I'll leave you with this, and you guys can take it home from here. But hey, we're sitting here right now, November second. Season's young. You're on fire. Ten points in nine games. Uh, this team is just lighting lighting the league on fire, man. First place. It's got to feel good uh you know what you've seen over the last couple of years so i just say keep it going man uh love your story what you've persevered through and leading this team it's uh it's certainly fun to watch i appreciate it thank you very much hey thank you nico we right, appreciate thanks, it brother guys. good thank luck you for having me oh yeah hell of a guy it's captain man devils are right good there. man Devils are fucking good. Yeah, good. they're like good. They, not... I wasn't. They boat raced the Canucks last night. Like, they, that wasn't they can, close. They can go. Like they can snap yeah. the puck around. They can do a lot of things. I actually think tomorrow night's game against Edmonton is one. If uh, you know, if there's a Thursday night, you you want to catch a late night game. Gumps, we know you're up. You're down for that. You're in that zone, anyways. Uh, it, that's oh, yeah. one because I mean we know what Connor and Leon can do. I don't know if enough fans know what this Devils team can do. I mean that this no. game could be fast and furious. So uh, that that's kind of a sleeper game because you know it's not usually that sexy of a matchup, the Devils Oilers. But there's a lot of star power in this game. I can't wait to see it. That's a that's yeah. Because nice last last night was the. Go ahead, Nick. Oh, I was just gonna say I was gonna use an old cliche. 
uh, from the TV biz, you know, just classic analyst talk. That's a nice litmus test for this young team oh, going into Edmonton, taking on the fast it. Oilers on that <laughs> crazy fast ice. Uh, yeah, the, that, was, that was the first. Stick. Yeah, that was the first full game I watched of them last night. Like I said, and I was, I was in awe. Of, well, I know the Coovers haven't looked great, but I mean, they showed up last week against the fucking Penguins somehow, but. Yeah, that Devils team is good, dude. And Oilers are buzzing right now as well. Uh, Rupper, I want to ask you, um, a couple storylines are out there. And I want to ask you, I guess, what's the most intriguing to you if I throw a couple topics your way? Right. Uh, the Colorado Avalanche and their kind of surprising start, not being so hot out the gate. Uh, or Eric Carlson and the resurgence that he's having in San Jose. And I bring this up because I say it all the time, big East coast bias on this show. We got gumps out there on the West coast pulling the night shift. He's up all hours of the night. He sees everything, but I'm be honest. Like I haven't been paying close attention to the San Jose sharks because in a rebuild, they're not very good, you know, but I, uh, after that disaster, that was the penguins Bruins game last night or triumph, depending on which side of the coin you fall on. I was uh, I caught myself laying there staring at the ceiling, and uh, the game flipped over to the Ducks and the San Jose Sharks, and Leah Hextall was on the call and she was bringing the juice, and there were like four goals Always in does. the first Always first does. like five minutes, ten minutes of the game, and guys were just lighting it up. Adam Henrique was having a big night, and Eric Carlson was lighting it up. This looks like the old Eric yeah. Carlson. This looks like the Ottawa Eric Carlson. Uh, so what's what's surprising you more, uh, Colorado struggling or uh, Eric basically rebounding with San Jose early on here? I mean, Eric Carlson's number two in the NHL in goals as a defenseman. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, and, you know, it's behind. He's behind Connor. Connor has eleven. He's got nine. So his hat trick last night obviously brought him from six to to nine. I mean, it's um, it's awesome, man. I mean, we you can't forget what. Eric Carlson was in Ottawa. Like it hasn't translated. It hasn't been there. He's had a ton of injuries. I mean, I was on the pens when the whole Matt cook situation cut his, uh, yeah. you know, they had that accident where it, um, you know, sliced his Achilles. I mean, this Eric Carlson's been dealing with ankle foot, tons of issues over the years and, and his bread and butter was his skating. So that's yeah. obviously going to affect him. Right. So, uh, but you, we can't forget like when this guy was there, and you know, as great as Sid was and Ovi, and this has been their league for a long time. And and I'm not going to say for a second Eric Carlson was better than them as far as the best player in the world. But there was a couple of years he was in the conversation. Like he was, best he was someone for sure. He was he was someone that you had to entertain that conversation with, and that's impressive because now we see that in Kale McCarr where people are like, yeah. well, Kale McCarr is in that conversation with Connor. He's in that conversation with yeah. these types of players. Um, we, we usually don't have that. That's what makes Kale so unique. But let's not forget, Eric Carlson was there. Eric Carlson yep. had, uh, you know, there was a time when the Norris Trophy winners were getting 65 points, 70 points. Eric Carlson was like an 80-point defenseman. And yeah. I think he had 82 points the one year or something. So uh, this guy, man, I love seeing him back. I, I wonder, I wonder – if he could stay healthy in the production, if there's a team that could find a creative way to take a run at Eric Carlson, what is it? Five more years? He's got yeah. It's 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 a scary one. But if San Jose, so San Jose's objective there, and we talked about it on here, of their defensemen, Mark Edward Vlasic, Brent Burns, and Eric Carlson, the one that probably gave you the most right now is Brent Burns, and that was the one yeah. that they traded, yeah. but. And it kind of makes sense, right? Like he's the desirable one. Well, now Eric Carlson's busted in. And so if the San Jose Sharks can somehow retain salary and figure it out, or maybe keep them there and and you know start building this team, but this team's not going to win for a little while. So it, it's going to be interesting. But nine goals right now on November second. I mean, do you, is, do you think do you think that's kind of, do you think that's because he maybe really feels like it's his team without Burnsy there, Rupper? It could be that because remember that's right? how he that's, that's how, how it was in Ottawa. Was. Like yeah, yeah he, he was, was the fucking he was. man. Do you you guys remember? Do you ever play with was, anyone like that, Rupper? Like some guys, I feel like need that. Yeah, they need to be like the man. Yeah, like, I feel like Rick Nash, and maybe it was just because he got to the Rangers later in his career. But like 
with the Blue Jackets, like he was the guy every single night. And then it's like he comes to a talented Rangers team and he it's it's not like he like wasn't good yeah. anymore. He just wasn't as dominant, it seems. Yeah, it's it's hard to speak on that because I wasn't that type of player, but some guys thrive with that, right? They want to be the guy, they want to be the yeah, man. Yeah. And that you could say that that's selfish. But that could I, also I, be being a leader, though, too, yeah. Rupper. Like, you yeah. want it to be your fucking team. Like, yeah, you know I mean? 100%. I want my guy to want the puck. Yeah. I want my guy to want to be the best on the team. Um, so, yeah, I think it kind of goes both ways. But, man, he was an absolute beast. So, um, I, I just love seeing him healthy. Because when he's healthy, his skating's everything for him. He seems to be healthy up to this point. I hope it continues. Because, I mean, these numbers are absolutely ridiculous, what he's putting up right now. It's crazy. Uh, like you mentioned, if someone could convince San Jose to retain a little bit of salary. I think it's five years left on the deal at 11 and a half or something like that. Jeez. That's a lot of cash. But, I mean, if you can convince San Jose to hold on to, like, maybe three mil of that, possibly even four, depending on what you're willing to give up. Like, if you get Carlson that down to eight, nine million, I feel like that's very doable for some teams who could Absolutely. use a guy like that. And you mentioned, too, the big key there, he's got to stay healthy. Because even what, remember when he was drafted? And it was Brian Murray who picked him, and it was like, oh, this guy, he's he's little. He's never going to make it. Like, yeah. He's going to get beat up. And then he comes in and lights the league on fire. And it eventually did catch up to him. It, it took a wear and tear on his body, but now he seems to be back. And it's awesome to see because he's a guy who eyeballs will immediately flock to him. And being in a situation like San Jose where they're rebuilding, like they need something. They need yeah. something to sell tickets. They need something to get eyeballs on them. And he's a guy that can do that. Uh, the Coyotes got their first win in Mullet Arena the other night. Big win. Uh, I don't think Florida's too happy about their situation, but the Oats get a win. It, I mean, is this team can they, <laughs> in that building? Can it should they be capture, 2 and 0 in that fucking building. Can they capture some magic, or is this just it's just going to be something all year, you think? I mean, they have the, the table set for this franchise to make in the fan base to make this arena something special win lose or draw they they got a chance yeah. to do that right yeah. and we, we've I, everything i've heard talked to josh morrissey today he said it was a great atmosphere on opening night playing winnipeg was playing there um a lot of people were saying our, our boy pete blackburn was out there for valley sports doing some uh you know kind of uh, reporting from out there he's like this place was he's like this place is fucking awesome like it was great the atmosphere was awesome uh, so, I mean, the table's set in that department. Here's the thing with about this this Yotes team. You know, uh, Vimelka, our boy, we talked about him last yeah. year, that goaltender. They need, to, they need to trade this kid. They need to trade him. Like, they, he, he is going to win them a dozen games this year because he just stands on his head and is unbelievable. Like, I, this is not a team that's supposed to be winning right now, right? This is supposed <laughs> to be part of the pro- – if they do this, if they go and play a 5,000 seat arena, they deplete their roster basically down to nothing. We got a Penguins goal here. It looks like Josh Archibald. Archibald. Fucking yeah. Archie Archie saw it. Archie saw it. <laughs> Archie's yeah. fucking buzzing out there. Well, what a shake by uh, Tage Thompson at one end. Sick toe drag. Good defensive play. Go down the other end. It was this Paling. Paling yeah. back door. It's Archibald. Nice play. Good. Hey, Fucking about time these depth players do something for the Pens, right? Hey, I mean, Archibald scored last night. I can't knock him. Yeah, like... I like him. I, like, I think he provides a lot. But anyways, um, uh, you know, they, this Vinmoka, like, you're doing all these things. They want Connor Bedard. Like, they want their best shot at Connor Bedard. This Vimelka is either extremely hot or extremely cold, but when he is hot, you're not beating him. You're going to get 60 shots on goal. Like, Dude, get rid of that guy, right? Like, yeah. put a put a put a put a goalie who maybe can't save sixty shots in a game. Like they, I, you know what I mean? Like that's your best way. If a team in today's modern sports and in hockey, if you want to bomb out for a pick, the easiest way to do that in hockey is just put a goalie. put a put a like average at best goaltender in there. He's going to see need, stuff. They need Harry Sateri back. Yeah, exactly. Whoa, 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 yeah, exactly. whoa. Exactly. Oh, no. They would fucking win every game at Mullet Arena with Harry. Uh, Harry Sateri almost kept the stars out of the damn playoffs. That's last true. Year, dude. That Speaking of true. goaltending, uh, let's get to it finally. Last night, the debacle that was for the Pittsburgh Penguins, the 
the improbable comeback that it was for the Boston Bruins. Uh, I'm not going to put it all on Tristan Jari because it's just a lazy excuse. Uh, nah, you and, can do it. The Go team ahead. made plenty of bad plays in front of him too. Jari seems like he's lost all confidence in himself lately. And I mean, hey, losing four games in Western Canada will do that to you. And I know he didn't start all four, but like they – They've looked bad in front of him. They've exposed him a couple times. And he he had a rough night last night against the Bees. And the Bees, to their credit, through all the adversity with Linus Olmark getting pulled, Swayman comes in, takes the skate from Bergeron, it hyperextends his knee, he's out. Olmark comes back in cold after being chased already and doesn't surrender another goal. Uh, it was It was quite a night. I know you didn't get to see all of it or much of it because you were calling the Rangers game. Did you get to see any highlights or anything? I want to get your thoughts on, on what the meltdown was there for the Pens and Bruins last night. Cause everyone was watching that. It was on ESPN. It was the national game. Everybody, all eyes were on it. Yeah. So I, I ended up, uh, you know, I was simultaneously at that time doing the, the Ranger game. So when I get done, I do my normal kind of uh, last night, this morning, going over things. And we were texting last night, obviously about the game. And I, I didn't really know. I mean, at one point I'm checking scores and intermission and I and I think it you know the one point I I was looking at was was it five two was that what it was yeah it was five two yeah. five two I'm like all right here we go like that that is a huge statement game this is a huge springboard for the Pens I don't care what happened in Canada they go zero and four they come back they're going to beat the best team in the league this is big then all of a sudden it's like I I get home and I'm like wait they lost they they lost that game in in overtime and and uh, you know that's sure just did. kind of the way the way it's been for them. Uh, you know, this is a this is a team though that, um, that I, I just think that with the Penguins, they're they're too stubborn, man. They're just stubborn. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think it's like they don't have these big glaring issues. I mean, first off, not having Chris Letang hurt them last night. Like that 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 hurts. He, he's back in there against Buffalo tonight, so that should certainly help. That's a different looking decor without Chris Letang. But like, they. And I don't mean just the stars throughout the lineup. They only want to play one way and yeah. they want to play their way and the fun way and the scoring way. And when they were winning games and scoring six, fun. when they were, when they were winning and scoring <laughs> six goals a game, that's all good. They were world beaters. Then they, I felt like a big turning point was second period Edmonton, second period Edmonton. Yep. They, they got a reality check. We, we can't play like that against many teams. We we have to understand that, yes, we have tons of skill, but when they're at their best, man, they're managing the game, they're playing defense, they'll still pot five goals. You know what I mean? Like, they're just, they're just go, 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 no matter what. And sometimes it's not go, go, go. Like, you, you got to you gotta have the wherewithal and the – and uh, you got to cut plays off, man. And, and yeah. I just feel like at this point, throughout their lineup, it's just a stubbornness. Like they're not doing those things. I think they'll be fine. This group knows how to do it. But if you think it, you know you're going to go toe to toe with Edmonton, or you're going to go toe to toe with some of these teams, like no, you can't. Oh no! <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, a lot of talk what about the hell is going on in here? Yeah. A lot of yeah. talk about Pittsburgh. What are you doing here? Going to toe to toe with Edmonton. What about going to toe to toe with Boston? Okay, because hey. what Monty <laughs> has those boys doing, and granted, I have never seen a more mafia hockey guy looking in my life like I have with Coach Monty. But the way Monty has those boys flying around, Pittsburgh can do whatever they want. I don't care if there are ten Latangs on the ice wrapper, okay? Because it he wouldn't have helped. They, if Flower was in his prime in that net, that wouldn't have helped. Because the Bruins, at this moment in time, after, Ropper, I won't tell what I texted you today, but after you said they're dead, there's no yeah, way I did. That they can do it again, Ropper, and here we are, you know, 9-1. and one, And I don't want to say, look, I knew this was going to happen. I know hockey. But with that being said, I knew this was going to happen, <laughs> and I knew Marshan which I don't know if anybody could have predicted that he would come back from an injury that should have had him out till 
January, February, 2023. Doesn't matter. He says, you know what? I'm the toughest. Clearly, clearly, clearly PEDs, but continue. Oh, Man, look, oh, P- oh, PEDs are not. He wouldn't, no. he wouldn't be the first guy in the I'm NHL. Just, uh, hey, let's, let's, let, let's, make it, let's make a correction. That was a fucking yeah. joke. Don't, yes. Don't yeah. Nobody go ready with that. <laughs> look, it well, doesn't keep, matter. Keep the, P- keep the PEDs over here, all right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> maybe maybe Marshan did take a little trip to Gumpy's house, but who knows? Gumpy was in Florida <laughs> today. He looks just like the Miami Dolphins beat reporter. But with that being said, Rupper, serious question. Who the hell is this Monty guy? Because yeah. he is awesome. Yeah, dude, he, he was awesome. And Gumps knows he was coaching down there in Dallas. He had some issues he needed to take care of uh, off the ice. And, and it was just that they had no – that Dallas did not want to fire him. There were circumstances no, they where – held on as long as they could. Yeah, man, he had he had to go in and, uh, you know, and, and go take care of uh, his health. And, um, the you know, he was out for a little bit. He was assistant coach in St. Louis. Uh, this guy has never been a question, this guy being a coach. And he goes in there and, man, I'll tell you what. Ray Ferraro, I heard it today that Ray Ferraro must have said maybe on the broadcast or one of these broadcasts said, I'll tell you what, seeing this team live and being between the benches of the Boston Bruins right now, this is unlike any Bruins team that he's seen in years. He said they oh, are no. they he say he goes, he goes, when you see them, he goes, when you see them live, they've got this jump. They are flying, and Monty's got them playing the right way. Dude, honestly. These guys are a fucking wagon right now, man. They I'm really, really are. I'm I, I, I hate saying that. I hate saying that. And I hate you come at me in my text today. And I'm like, <laughs> motherfucker, get it to this. Wait, where's the That guy. Get it to that guy up there. Or give it to Pat or give it to Phil. Like, I'm here. I'm here to promote good hockey, man. And you coming at me. All I'm saying is, hey, I will say I was dead wrong. Dead wrong, dead wrong. This team is legit. And you know what's kind of funny, dude? I ran in last night, former linemate of mine in New Jersey, Jamie Langenburn. I think he's assistant GM now oh, for the God. for the Bruins. Lang- dog. <laughs> so he oh, was, I love Langenbrunner. <laughs> so he was uh last night at the game. Uh, I was up in the press box at MSG and I'm walking around going to get a fucking slice of pizza. And I run into Jamie up there. I'm like, Lipper, what's up? And he comes over and I'm like, yeah. hey. How about the squad, man? And I started asking him, like, I was dead wrong. I thought you guys take a step back. And he's just like, he just said, really simple and cool. He's just like, you know what, man? I'll tell you what. Bergie wasn't going to let us stink. Bingo. Like, this guy, this guy sets the pace, man. This guy is, he's the man. Like, he he sets the pace, sets the standard. You know, uh, obviously, there's a ton of great things going on. But he goes, it's Bergie. Bergie wasn't going to let us stink. I, I I find that amazing, man. Like that, like Patrice Bergeron's still getting it done, dude. Yeah, I mean, he's been he should have been a captain ten years ago. And Rupper, it is big of you to say you were wrong. I accept your apology. As a, a big man myself, I will say I was right, and, um, <laughs> that, and I humbly accept that everyone, All right. especially the people in the chat, acknowledge. Yes, fine. The Bruins are the best team in the league. I will say, even former Bruins coach Cassidy Butch. It's great to see him doing well over in Vegas, even though we miss him dearly. Uh, Crazy was not playing, though, last night. Is he actually hurt? And how big is it that he's back for Posh to get re-signed? Because, I'm, look, I've been on Amazon and Fanatics. I've been this close to buying a pasta jersey, but I can't buy a jersey of a guy who might leave. Oh, you should definitely buy it. You should buy it right now. That's what I mean. See? See? Okay. Honestly, though, dude, with what this guy – what do we got? Do you know he got his numbers up right now? Um, I, I knew going into last night, he had seven goals, 10 assists through the first eight or so games or whatever it was. And I, he could potentially like, I, we said this in our season preview when we're picking some, uh, we're, we're going with some futures, like this Bruins team, the way they are right now. And if they can continue this, this year, this story wasn't supposed to happen like this. Right. So I think that's a perfect target. Like, all right. An MVP, a Hart Trophy can come out of there. If David Pasternak wins the Hart Trophy this year, and he very well could, yep. holy fuck, is that price going high, man? Like, Dude, well, what, does he, what does he get in the NHL? Like, like I don't know, 20 years, $50 million? Listen, dude, I don't think there's any chance that he will not be in Boston. 
but they're gonna have to pay him, dude. They're gonna have uh, to pay him a lot Gucci, of money. So I re I tweeted out a clip of Trip Tracy, uh, the uh, dude from the Carolina Hurricanes, the uh, broadcast guy, the one uh, where he talk, said penis, or talking about Reese's one? penis. Uh, yeah, he slipped uh, out on the on broadcast, and Bucci <laughs> retweeted yeah. Bucci Gross, obviously the ESPN legend. And I looked at Bucci's uh, Twitter name, and right now on on Twitter he's pasta eight by eleven and a half. So I think that's what you're looking at, Connor. And the NHL contracts are limited to seven years as a free agent, or you can resign for eight years with your current team. And 11 and a half is the upper limit. I think it's, what is it, 12, maybe 12 and a half upper would be like the max that you could do. But uh, 11 and a half for eight would be a pretty sweet deal. Yeah, for I mean, both Connor, sides. Connor's, Connor's what, like 12, five. And I yeah. think Paw said, I mean, that contract was signed a couple years ago, but I think. I think Pasta's got a chance at running close to that, man. Why really? not? Worth every penny, especially because he is. is he the only is he the only guy we have to pay right now? Because we gave Homp or Hompus Lindholm uh, what eight year deal last year, and he came through in the clutch. He's had he had the game of his career last night. It was worth every penny just for last night. Yeah, this fucking the New England sports <laughs> drives me nuts. Like I think I finally think the Pats are dead. And they go against my Browns. Well, I fucking work them, and I'm like, oh Son well, of a bitch. I mean. And then I'm like, all right, well, maybe the Bruins will suck. They're in first place. Like, I can't. We can't shake these motherfuckers ever. No, I mean, not to mention, you know, well, we don't have to talk about the Celtics because it's basketball, and you know, their coach situation is what it is. But I mean, they're four and two. You know, they're they're right. They're still <laughs> favorites. They're still favorites to win the NBA championship. So, I mean, I currently right now I'm looking at a. Primetime hockey game on Tuesday because the bees are the best. Primetime basketball game on Wednesday because the Celtics yeah. are the best. Guess what? Oh, are the Patriots playing on Thursday night? No. Another primetime hockey game on Thursday night against the Rags. Are the Rags shit or is Shesterkin still the guy? He's still the guy, dude. But- hey. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're very good. This Listen, the Bruins are, are nice right now, but like fucking 10 games in, dude. Ten fucking games in. Ten out of eighty-two, though. When you look at it like that, it's like, oh, we're almost to the halfway mark. I don't know, man. I don't know. We'll see. Hey, but if we could have. Uh, what would you do if we had uh, a, a Vegas? I mean, I don't see that happening. Nah, but you could have a Vegas yeah. Boston finals. I That'd could see it sick. happening. Oh, I would love to see it for the storylines because everyone said, and and I'm not trying to kick dirt on him because he's doing great in, in Vegas, but. Bruce Cassidy kind of wore out his welcome there. I'd love to see. I love to see all the the the, the stuff trickling out in the Stanley Cup Finals with those two. Well, and the thing is, and you know, I, I'll always love Butch Cassidy. He, you know, he helped us get over the Claude Julian era, and that was an amazing era. It really was. With that being said, if Stoner wants to come across the fucking ice. With the hamper rolling <laughs> around, and with McAvoy. Once McAvoy gets back, that's the thing. Like, boys, let's be real. We still don't have our top defenseman, and we are already nine and one, hottest start in the history of our goddamn team. Like, I know you couldn't see Vegas Bruins, but it feels like it's going to be second place, whoever makes it out of the West versus the Stanley Cup champions of the 2022 season, the Boston Bruins. Good. We gotta get just. Uh, I just say we got it. We well, gotta get good. 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 Hey. Also, Rupper, if you think uh, this guy doesn't give it to every single one of us about a game like that before Come he on. comes to you, you're out of your mind. No, I know. He that. he made his rounds in the office. He went to every single person in there, and it wasn't until like way later in the day where he's at the urinal. He looks over and goes, "Oh, hey." I should text Rupper and tell him what a fucking idiot he is. <laughs> oh, dude, I know, but I've been I I've I've been dead wrong on a few of these teams so far this year, and it's like you know, people let you know every fucking second. Like they don't let you know the shit you call right. You know, the one thing you call. Like I said, Bruins. Bruins are going to be coming down to earth. And then uh, I said something else, and it's like every game they're like, "Oh, yeah, did you watch that one?" It's like, okay, come on. But uh, <laughs> hey, I, I really feel like we got to get our boy Billy to make maybe make this encrypted. You know, this uh, podcast that'd be so nice. You know, maybe some encryption here, and then we got a password sensitive maybe next time. But well, we appreciate nah. you. We appreciate you, dude. Yeah, hey, I love jumping in here. I am all in on hockey this year. I know, you know, maybe in the previous year, some people might have said, you don't even watch the games, and that's not true. But this year, more so than ever, I have, and, you know, I won't show you, but I got a two-TV setup tomorrow night, 
because of what the Bees have done, I will watch every game on my second TV. So I'm in. And, you know, look, I won't jump in, okay, Rupper? And I, I, I said my piece. I won't jump in and say you were wrong ever again. With that being said, you should probably bet on the Bruins for the next 72 games because we're winning it up. <laughs> okay? All right, man. Let's do it. All Let's right, do boys. it, man. Hey, go Bruins. I'll see you guys all later. Gump. You know, that guy who was the Dolphins beat reporter, he looked just like you should contact him, maybe switch identities with him, move to Miami. He had a good hat on his shoulders. I like what he was saying. He was a smart guy. (laughs) All right. Hey, Nick, again, great game last night. Rupper, I apologize for my text to you earlier. You're not a bitch. I was just. Hey, Hey. sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I got to take my medicine. No, well, sometimes I got to take me. my medicine. Hey, hey. You're not a bitch. I, hey, I, it's, next time you see me, I am not opposed. If you need to, on. If you need gonna, to choke let me, pull me. It up. I'll actually give you. Hold on. Let's go over what it actually said. Word Robert, word. hold on. I want to know what you were doing when you got this text. Like, what were you doing? You looked on your phone. I'll tell you what I was doing because it happened at. All right, so it happened at 2.30. So I was, at that time, <laughs> I was uh, heading into the NHL network. And I get this message that says, what's up, bitch? Bruins. <laughs> God, what's up, bitch? Bruins number one in the NHL. Just thought I'd remind you. Like, up, All right. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's like, I sent him this. I sent him all on a second. This is what's bullshit. Is I sent him this. I sent him this gif last week. Last week when they were on fire, I sent him this gif of yeah. Buzz Lightyear. And so I'm clearly giving them credit. Like this team looks good. Oh, that's what that that's meant. What, gif. That, that's what do you mean? What the fuck? Buzz is that Lightyear gif? was fired up. Dude, the Bruins. <laughs> And now, so that, I already gave that him credit, and you're going to call me, me, and you come at me, bitch. and you call me bitch. I just commented, Buzz Lightyear loves your boys, too, but anyhow. Hey, hey there's some, there's some give translation. I did not think that's what that meant. I thought that meant something way different. But now that I know that's what that meant, that I apologize even more yeah. for, for the yeah. text. So Unbelievable. <laughs> All right, boys. I'll leave you to it, Rupper. If you need a choke slam me next time you see me, no harm, no foul. It's completely okay. All right, buddy. Go bees. Later, boys. Uh, I fucking <laughs> that guy. Dude, I love I love getting the uh, what was it? He sent me a message. I think it was maybe in the playoffs last year or something, and it was like it's just face screaming, and he's at your guy's office, and he's just screaming in the phone and sends it. I, dude, I love it. Just, just <laughs> you go zero to hundred in one second with him. Oh, uh, he's that absolute. Man. Last year, last year, all of our teams lost in Game Seven of the first round on the same day. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking Guinos, Bruins, and Stars trifecta on like a Sunday night. Oh. Just absolutely brutal. I've seen enough heartbreak. <laughs> I'm ready for some glory days once again. Uh. <laughs> Rupper, just to get back on track real quick here for a little bit. I know we're going to wrap up soon, but uh, Tampa Bay had a bit of a scare. Uh, They've been struggling a little bit. They go up to Ottawa. Ottawa pumps three. And then, you know, Tampa Bay crawls back, and Braden Point kind of takes over and gets them back into the game. Any reason to worry about the Bolts right now, or should we be worried? Is this just the slow start from making three straight Stanley Cup finals, or is age – uh, free agency, uh, all these factors, playing that many games and that many years, finally starting to catch up with them. Honestly, dude, like, I, it's so hard for me to get concerned about this team. Got to right? like, gotta see it to believe it, right? Yeah, yeah like, it, it's just, uh, they, they've, they got some, they built some equity with me, you know? Yeah, for and sure. I'm not trying to say that they're, they're A-OK and they're fine and they're going to go to another finals. I, I don't know that. I mean, is there concern? Yeah, I mean, anytime a team doesn't look great, there's concern. But like, this team's making the playoffs this year. Yeah, oh, that's the I, thing. I mean, as long as as long as they get in, they got a shot. That's all that matters. Like, I don't as long think, as they I don't get think it in, matters what seed they are at this point. As long as they get in, they got a shot. Or sorry, as long as it yes, as long as they get in, they got a shot. And as long as 
they have this isn't even the name other players on the roster as long as they have that goalie that they yeah. have they've always got a chance that's that's yeah. like what we always said and i hate to always bring it back to sid or even connor uh mcdavid yeah, yeah. uh it's <laughs> like is like when you've got that guy like that th- that team always has a chance like, I don't care who the Penguins are over the last 15 years. You go into a playoff series and they got Sidney Crosby healthy, they've got a, a legitimate chance. I don't care who the rest of the roster is. Connor McDavid and whoever Edmonton has, they've got a chance. Like, Vassie's that down there. It's like, I don't know, man. They uh, it, It's hard for me. They look, they, they're dinged up too. They miss Anthony Sorelli for a little bit there. Um, they're still trying to figure out their decor. They got Brandon Hagel kind of trying to fill in, see if he can pick up mm-hmm. the slack. Maybe Ronjay Plot was. They got shit to figure out. But if there's a team that I'm not concerned about, it's them. I'm probably more concerned about Colorado, to be honest with you. And I'm not overly concerned about them either. I get it. Listen, we're 10 Robert. games in. We're overreacting. This is this is what we got to do. Uh, Gumpy was Gumpy was worried about the stars. I mean, look, one one bounce back win, and here they are yeah. again, right right back at the top. Hey, never the worried, one thing never with worried. the stars that's worried. The one thing with the stars that kind of gets me a little bit. If Otter's hurt, if Otter's hurt, we're fucked. Yeah, that's that's a huge piece. But those are the facts. uh, Sagan looks all right, man. Right now, like that the boar might be the first might be the first time he's healthy in a long time, right? Yeah, I mean he looks. He doesn't need to be that forty goal guy. He just needs to be. He just needs to be a weapon, and he's yeah he's been pretty good. So if he could stay healthy, man, even if you don't even need both those guys going, you don't need Ben and say, if just Sagan can get going and Ben could just be mediocre, yeah. like that'll make a huge difference for them. And with Otter, like I don't, with Otter, I don't feel like we're ever in a game where like he fucking stood on his head last year in the playoffs. Yeah. He's like, good, and man. we're, we're going to be better this year. Like as long as we're in the playoffs with him, we got a chance to, yeah. to go. Yeah. hundred percent. Uh, last thing before we get out of here, I know, uh, the Leafs have had a tough go of it lately. They're up two one in Philadelphia. Now, uh, heading into the third and standing on his head. <laughs> Felix Sandstrom. Felix yeah, Sandstrom. Sandstrom. <laughs> what Johnny you Sandusky is standing <laughs> on his head. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, talk- I play more than fucking. Saying backup goalies' names wrong. It's the best. Thomas Thomas Grishman Rupper. If he's in net for the, the Blues, disrespect that Gump has showed to Thomas Grice lately. Thomas Grishman, one of the best German-born goaltenders of all time. <laughs> one of the best German-born. <laughs> he's so bad, dude. He's had a oh. tough go this year. Uh, yeah. Rupper, uh, where am I going? I got such a... Oh, Toronto. We talked about it last week with Cools. And shout out to Cooley. Brought the fucking juice last Glad week. You. He was ready. That was Morency level energy. I love that. Can't get enough of that. Um, Barry Trotz obviously took that pin out of that grenade, launched it right in there for yeah. that job. Chucked uh, it in there. They got a tough schedule coming up, too. I think they got Vegas coming up. They yeah. got Bruins coming up. I know they got Pittsburgh coming up, which say what you want, but it's still a tough game for a team like Toronto. Right. Uh, what, what do we think? Do we think Sheldon Keith's making it out of the month? Like, uh, is it just a matter of time now, or do you do you have any faith at all that he can turn this thing around? I think it's one of two things here. I, I don't – I think that it is either – Kyle Dubas, the GM, this is his guy. He handpicked him from the Sioux, uh, just like he wanted to bring Matt Murray in because he had him there, and you have your guys, and I get it. We got a Buffalo goal here. Oh, no. Here Paterka. we go again. Looks like Paterka. Paterka. Oh, no. Is this the mother's trip? They showed what it looked like all the moms, dude. Mo- mother's trips and dad trips. Usually can't bring lose wins. on those. Usually bring wins, but anyways, uh, <laughs> actually, why would it be? Yeah, why would it be mother's trip for them at home though? But anyways, I hope uh, it's not a mother's trip. Oh, you're talking about Buffalo, mom's Buffalo? Trip. Yeah, was, sorry, no, Buffalo. I hope it's not the parents no, no. taking their moms to Buffalo for the trip. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, anyways, um, no offense, no offense. I love the uh-uh. people of Buffalo. Uh-uh. But they know. They know. Uh-uh. If you are going to run it back, which they did. 
Toronto with the same group, same coach, all those good things. It's like, I feel like this group has to be either this is it no matter what. It's inside that room. Figure it out. This is who we're going with. Or I'd make a change right now. And I don't even know if it's Sheldon Keefe. I'm not pinning all this on Sheldon Keefe. I think he's a very bright coach. I played against Sheldon Keefe in the minors. I actually got a funny story. Uh, I'll tell that real quick. Can I take a little, yes. take a little detour? Mm-hmm. We love so, Samson. We love Uncle fucking, stories. Uh, okay, we got power play for Samson power off play. Just made a Samson off just made an unreal save for the Leafs. Should be tied. So I'm playing in the OHL and uh, playing in Toronto uh, on the road against St. Mike's, St. Michael's majors. Uh, I'm playing for the Erie Otters. <clears throat> and Tough bar in uh, my parents, my parents drove up from Cleveland uh, to Toronto for the game. And the, at that time, St. Mike's was playing in the old Maple Leaf gardens. Right. So it's cool. Like I get to play in the gardens. Cause I, in the That's NHL, I never got to play there. Like that was they already, they already at, at the time, you know, the air Canada center that the Leafs were, so this was an opportunity for me to play in this holy grail of arenas, right? So uh, we're out there on the ice, and, and Sheldon Keefe, when he played, he had like 120 points. He led the OHL in, in points uh, maybe even a couple years. Uh, he was feisty as all shit, like just, you know, he was he was a agitator. He was a he, dog. He was, he was like a lightweight, you know, he'd go out there and, you know, he'd missing some teeth, whatever. And uh, so we're playing, we're playing there and our, uh, my parents came up. So it was like five hours. They get to the game. It's like the first period. And um, I, we got into it and uh, I speared Sheldon Keefe right in the stomach. Right. And he went down and they tossed me out of the game. They gave me a match penalty and, and uh, sorry, not tossed me out of the game. I got a five minute major and uh, got, like a five and a 10, I got sent to the room. I wasn't thrown out of the game. And uh, so the next nice. period. So uh, anyways, uh, the period, the period ends and Paul Terrio, who Paul Terrio used to coach with Ted Nolan in Buffalo. He's his assistant coach uh, back when Buffalo was, was uh, pretty good under Ted Nolan. Ooh, cool. And, and uh, Paul Terrio comes walking in and this guy's been a part of the NHL. He knows how historic that arena is. Uh, the Maple Leaf Gardens. He goes, he comes in the room and the, everyone's sitting there. I'm like, you know, 18 year old kid, wherever. And he's like, Did I hear this right? Did you, Michael, spear a player in the stomach on the other team? And I'm like, Yeah, I, yeah, I did. Like, yeah, God, it was, his ass. It was stupid. I just, yeah, to own it, right? I'm like, Yeah, yeah I did. Yeah. He goes, Take your fucking gear off. He goes, you're gonna come in here and you're gonna you're gonna be an embarrassment to what has been in this historic. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? You don't think there's some worse shit that's happened in this building over the years? <laughs> this is like this is like this is like gladiator shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's way worse than this. So I had to take my gear off. He threw me out of the game. And uh, so the second period starts and I go up and I go and I sit next to my mom and stepdad and, and they were like, what are you doing? I'm like, I got thrown out, dude. I'm like, I'm sorry. Like you guys drove five hours. Saw like one shift. I spirited a guy got tossed. And then as, as it's going on, I keep seeing we are getting shelled by this team. And, uh, Sheldon Keefe was, you know, potting all the, you know, probably scored three goals on my five minute major. Uh, they were killing us. And, and our coach kept sending guys off the ice one after another, like every stoppage of play. And so I'm like, mom, I got to go down the room and see what's going on. I go down there. There's like seven more guys. He threw out our team played the last half of the game with like, it was the five guys on the ice and like three extras on the bench. Cause he was like, so upset with everything that happened. But I'm like, they really like, that's my fuck. So and Sheldon Keefe, I honor him. man, huh? Yeah, though. So it was uh, Sheldon Keefe was uh, he was a son of a bitch to play against, but he he's a very bright player. He's he he uh, he he's a good coach. This is the this Leafs team is very progressive, right? The way they go about everything, analytics. They bring this coach in. Here's my problem. Very long winded way of getting to this. He, I don't know if he ever had a chance coming in there, and and the reason why is because they had Mike Babcock, yeah, and yeah. Mike Babcock. I could we could tell stories, things I've heard, uh, not really respected from the guys because he didn't respect the players, treated them like you know whatever second class citizens at time, and uh, but they went from a from a very disciplined, structured coach 
to, hey, we want someone that can listen to us, that we can grow with in this team. So they bring Sheldon Keefe in. So here's the problem. This team needs to get fucking squeezed now. Their best players, just like Torts did with Konechny and Hayes earlier on, and Konechny and Hayes in Philadelphia are awesome right now. This team needs to get – they need to get twisted a little bit. What Sheldon Keefe can't do it. A couple weeks ago, he sat Mitch Marner down for one shift. One shift, and then he come, comes out – the coming uh the following days and he detracts from what he did there in, in mm -hmm. his comments and i'm like dude this isn't good so i guess the point is you can't have ass that you're either gonna do it or you're not and i don't know if he ever could have done it when he came in because yeah. he doesn't have the cachet of a john tortorella he doesn't have the experience yeah. of the nhl level he doesn't have that he didn't have the nhl career it's like you know i don't know because it, it it's tough nowadays because these players can go to management and say get this fucking guy out of here or go to the coach i've seen it I've, I've been there and seen players say to the coach in the room in front of everybody, hey, I got a seven-year deal. I'm going to be here way longer than you are, so shut the fuck up. Like, <laughs> like this shit happens, man, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's a tough spot, but Kyle Dubas put him in that spot. So now this team needs to get pulled, and they need to get uh, they need to, to, to get taken to another level. I don't think he can do it because he doesn't have, like, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to all of a sudden now – be a disciplinarian and you haven't been the whole time. So I, I guess my point is you're either running it back with this group, no matter what. And if it doesn't work out, Kyle Dubas is probably losing his job. Sheldon keeps losing his job. Some core players are probably getting moved out or you sit there and you make a fucking move. Now you bring in Barry Trotz and the first sign Barry Trotz sees or any coach that has that cachet, you know what, Mitch sit down. Cause that's not how we're going to play here. And, and, and no one's done that. So uh, this Leafs team, uh, you know, they can win this game. They might run off seven games in a row. They still haven't corrected anything that they do wrong, right? They mm -hmm. and when they need to find another level, I'm not sure that they can do it. Uh is there anyone else out there other than Trots that fits the bill of kind of what you described? In my mind, like I know we're just shooting off the cuff here off the tip of our tongues and off the top of our heads, like Trots seems to be the perfect yeah. guy. I mean, Trots, Trots would be the the one. Um I think Claude Julian's still out there. Um, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Um, oh my gosh, Chicago went to Florida and had Quinville. to leave. Oh, yeah. Quinville. Yeah. Joel Quinville. Quinville. Yeah. I think Q. I think Q would be. I like. I like Q, and I like the Trump. worry. I don't, the I worry don't know about uh, Julian, but yeah, go ahead, Gus. The worrying part about Trotz or Quenville is the Leafs might actually win. <laughs> yeah yeah but see here's the like, point I'm, Kai, and, and I'm enjoying this right now like this is i'm sweet. i'm like, i'm very i'm very um let's say like i understand and i get frustrated when there's there's a coaching recycling going on yeah naturally but the leafs need someone that is as big as their stars and i'm not saying their stars are a problem i'm not saying that i mean i mean Mitch Marner had an awesome year last year. Austin Matthews' five-on-five -five numbers were off the charts. He had an incredible sixty-goal campaign last year. Felt like the year but, if they were going to do it. But anything. if you, but but listen, those guys need to find another level, just like everybody. And if those guys find another level, the fucking eighteen guys with them are going to find another level. I don't know that you can't self-motivate yourself to find yeah. like this. Like you need someone to push you. You need someone to, you know, my remember when Mike Sullivan got to Pittsburgh. He bit he bit back at Gino, right? Like gave it back to him. And like, yeah, you gotta have that. Get that respect. So I think it's gotta be a veteran guy who's been through it. It's got some cachet. And the biggest one out there for me is Joel Quenville. All right. Uh two more things before we get out of here. First thing, uh, shout out to the YouTube chat. You guys are awesome. Uh I I, I peek in there from time to time just to check out what's going on. Uh there's a guy in there, Nicholas Frank uh Netty. Uh, tweets a lot, doesn't tweet chats, a lot of, uh, interesting facts and stuff. We appreciate you for that. He, uh, he said, uh, via Sportsnet, Ryan Reynolds has interest in buying the Ottawa senators, allegedly who Ottawa, this news just broke. What was that yesterday? Maybe the day before that they were potentially going to be up for sale. Obviously Eugene Melnick, uh, the infamous owner there for a long time had his, had his issues and, and tragically passed away. Uh, so the team is looking uh whoever it fell to fucking uh, deadpool that's yeah. incredible uh it, it's is looking it a billion to, they yeah. want a billion for it 
Uh, uh, to be honest, it's probably not far Fridge, off, that's right? What, that's what Fridge was saying today. I saw Fridge doing his rounds on some sports net shows today. That's what he was saying. Probably he said not he far doesn't, off. He doesn't think it'll get that high, but he said that is the thought. He said, why not ask? That's all right. That's that's what you shoot for, right? Because the pen just sold for what nine hundred some million. Uh, the the National Predator sale is finally going through. To uh, is it Billy? I, I want to say Billy Haslam, but I don't know. We call everybody Billy, so I don't know if that's just a generic name. I know he's the brother of Jimmy Haslam, that scumbag owner of the Cleveland Browns. Oh, Rutgers so should team. this guy be in jail too? Because that guy should. The Maybe Browns I don't know. Bad. I don't know. You know, you don't yeah. want to judge a brother <laughs> by a brother, but. Looking you know what far, I'm saying, but, brother. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, brother. Uh, uh, brother. Uh, so, no, if Ryan Reynolds, dude, that would be – listen, we see this all the time. Yeah, uh, Mark Cuban's going to buy the Pirates. Uh, Mark Cuban was going to buy the Penguins. Like, these names get linked all the time and it never happens. Sometimes it's just for fun fodder online. Sometimes it's just to get some good press. But I will say this. If Ryan Reynolds – Probably, probably the most famous Canadian on the planet at the moment, outside of our pal Gumps. Uh, if he was to get involved in the NHL, that's huge for the league. Yeah. That's a massive selling point for them. They should be jumping at that. They should be trying everything they can to get that guy into the ownership group of the NHL because he, I feel like, would do wonders for the league as a whole and for Ottawa. Yeah, I mean that's uh, um, the, the 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 prices. I mean, it's all good when the, these team values are through the roof. You're starting to see. I mean, the Penguins set that record, and it, and it might be, um, you know, just keep climbing, right? So yeah, having that notoriety, I think, is huge. And uh, the Ottawa needs. Ottawa's got some issues there, though. That's what I'm. That's why I wonder how it would get to that because they they have their whole arena situation. Like that's that was. Rupert, that was I'm, that I'm was telling a, you, a guy like, like that was a if Ryan Reynolds goes arena. in there and somehow gets a hold of that team. That guy will charm the pants off anyone, and he will get an arena built. He will do what needs to be done. It's not like they're going to move the team where they're going to move them to. They're not going to move them out of Canada. They're not going to move them to a different city in Canada. It's he would be the the perfect, perfect storm for the league and for the Sens. Yeah, I think it would be awesome too, man. It would be, it would be, uh, it would be incredible to get, to get some, yeah, just some more eyes like that, right? Some more influence uh, from big name people like that, right? Instead yeah. of these, right, whatever, man, ownership is ownership and there's great ownership out there. Instead of some of these groups having some, a, a big name behind it is always, is always good. Yeah. All right, Gums, I cut you off. Go ahead. What were you saying? I can't remember. <laughs> well, I mean, shout out to Ron Reynolds, you know, Vancouver. Oh, BC it was. Guy. Sorry. It was a uh, it was a billion for the Senators with a new stadium included. Gotcha. That's, gotcha. That's a that's a great deal. Yeah, that's, that's that's big. Yeah, perfect. I know they're a smaller market in terms of in terms of Canada and the NHL, but still like. I feel like that's something you can't. I feel like the NHL needs to make that work if it's serious, if it's yeah. for real. Again, you know, we see this stuff all the time. We see this person's interested in the, like Bezos and the NFL and all that. There's a lot of flirting there. Cuban for years with Pittsburgh just to try yeah. and build up some goodwill and whatnot. But that would be absolutely massive for the league, absolutely massive for Ottawa. Uh, last thing. And now we'll get out of here. Uh, we've rambled on for far too long. Uh, CFO Phil hit me up earlier. He said, hey, you want to give something away? I said, absolutely. Always want to give something away. Give the stick. I'm not giving the away stick. my stick just yet. Give away the uh, fucking stick. Hashtag I want Nick's stick. We're not giving away my stick <laughs> 10 games into the season, like five episodes in. We're not doing that. You know? I'll consider it later. Oh, in the, the season. Flyers. Let's go. Oh, my gosh. They tied it up. No, that's bad. 3 2. These went up oh, 3 two. 1. You know, the chat's going to do a whole lot more than that. They got to be a friend, tell a friend a whole lot more to, to be giving away a fucking classic Eastern synergy. I'm looking at it right now. I love that thing. Look that's at a good, that that's a good hashtag, though. I think that, that is a, that is a good hashtag. <laughs> but, no. <laughs> CFO Phil hit me up for something much more exciting for a giveaway. Uh, 
pair of slides. Who doesn't Ooh. want a brand new oh. pair of hey. for the brand slides from the PMS oh, store yeah. in the month saw, of November? I saw him rocking those on a photo uh, today. They are quite yeah. comfortable. Yeah, they're absolutely beautiful. You can wear them around the house. It is November. It's cold pretty much everywhere. Uh, so Gumpy, work your magic here. You're gonna give us a hashtag. Probably just do something simple like take a screenshot. Say something nice to somebody. We'll copy off the main show because it's a great gimmick. Spread some positivity. Maybe tell your friends who haven't listened to the show yet or haven't subscribed on YouTube or haven't liked the videos. Uh, go ahead and do all that. We'd love to get some growth going on. Uh, and we'll give away a pair of slides uh, from this from stored up at McAfeeShow.com. Shout out to CFO Phil for coming across a good find to give away. Hell yeah. Use, uh, how about this? Hashtag that's hockey slides. Hashtag that is that some of your slides. best work. I, <laughs> it's pretty good. That it's is pretty good. It's no, I want, no, I want Nick's stick, but that'll do. And, and in the tweet, take a screenshot and put who you think is going to win the Stanley Cup. And if it's changed from the start of the season. Okay, there we go. Say something nice to somebody. Who you think is going to win the Stanley Cup? What was the hashtag again? One more time. That's hashtag hockey slides. that's hockey slides because we're giving away slides. Absolutely incredible. Beautiful work, gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> Rupper, great booking as always. Gumpy, great hashtag as always. Uh, <laughs> Looking forward to next week. Can't wait. Uh, big games this weekend. A couple big games tomorrow night as well. Hopefully the Pens can pull this one off and not fucking blow it. Uh, so we'll see. We'll go enjoy these third periods. We'll go enjoy the rest of our evenings. Uh, shout out to everybody in the chat. Appreciate you for following along again. Yes. Uh, Hell yeah. You guys are you guys are absolute uh, beauties in there. We love it so much. Be a friend. Tell a friend. Share the love, spread the link, tell everybody, subscribe to the page. We can't thank you enough. Uh, thanks for rocking with us. And that's Hockey Talk. Hell yeah.